Welcome back. So we are going to focus on zone of proximal development. Um, all right, so let's proceed. All right, so the way teachers typically think of it, or at least the erroneous way to think about zone of proximal development is um, I've heard it being described as sort of the Goldilocks effect. That is, um, you want a task that is not too hard and not too easy. It should be just right. All right, so that's what the Goldilocks or the zone of proximal development is about, that you're selecting your task so that it's at the right level for that particular child. Well, here's the challenge with that. Um, what does that mean exactly? Um, how do we actually go about selecting it um, the right, just so that it's just right for that child? How do we do that when we have 20 to 30 or more students in our class? That seems to be um, a, weir a, a very weird notion and almost an impossible one to expect teachers to do, to, to select a task that is not too hard, not too easy, but just right. Well, um, let's focus on what Vygotsky really meant. So Vygotsky argues that zone of proximal development is the assistance given to the learner when the learner cannot complete the task independently. Um, so here's a, a child that is potentially struggling on the task. Um, learning begins to take place when the activity is too hard for the child to do alone. Um, so you need a partner. You need someone else to help you out, to assist. So what Vygotsky says is that there are three important states that the learner goes through. Um, there, is, um, there are the activities that the learner can do independently when they first start out. And then after some period when they're in the zone of proximal development, they can do it independently. But when they're in the zone of proximal development, which I should have labeled, then they're learning with assistance. It is that period that is the zone of proximal development. Now that's the simple version. It actually gets even more complicated than that. And other people you know, are interpreting Vygotsky's text, which remember was written in Russian, so Americans are coming along, reading this text and interpreting it. And there are actually different ways of um, interpreting that particular notion. But for you, um, the important thing is that the zone of proximal development is that space when the, uh, when the learner is learning with assistance. So they cannot do this alone. Um, okay, so I want to give you some real-world um, examples. Um, so first example, let's look at learning how to ride a bike, an activity many American children undertake before they grow up. Here is the image. An advanced other, someone who can ride a bike, a parent, an older sibling, holding on to the seat, and in this case, the handlebar. The learner sits on the bike. The learner should already know what riding <clears throat> a bike looks like. So in other words, they've probably seen it in the environment, in the neighborhood, and on TV. <clears throat> they have seen it. And, and not only have they seen it, but they're choosing to mimic uh, this behavior. The adult, the more capable other, helps the learner balance on the bike. That's essentially what is happening. That's the learning that has taken place, um, which the child can't do alone, can't balance on the bike. So the adult, the parent, um, helps the learner balance on the bike. But this is the interesting thing. There is an experimentation taking place on the part of the capable other, the, the parent. The parent will go through these, this process of loosening his grip uh, in response to what the learner can and cannot do. So when the learner seems to be balancing okay, the adult is going to loosen his grip on the seat. When he thinks that the uh, learner can't balance, he'll tighten the grip and restore balance to the bike. 
And it's that process. And it, you know, it takes for a while, sometimes letting go and the child failing, holding on, and the child feels really confident letting go. The child can do it a little bit, but then fails. So it's a process. But the parent is responsive to the child's needs, providing it when, um, when the child needs it. There is an interaction between the two until the learner figures out the skill and can do it independently. This is the zone of proximal development at work. This is the zone of proximal development. This is not the task being too easy or too hard. It is when the child needs assistance and is learning because of this interaction that is causing it. Um, the learner is not able to do it alone, but can be much more successful when the advanced other is holding on. The child is actually riding the bike when the, the parent is holding on. And until this child can do it independently, this is the learning process. All right, here's another example. Um, learning how to read at home. Many kids are learning how to do that. It actually was something that we did quite a bit, um, even before school. But um, many parents read to their children. Um, from this experience, turn how, children learn how to hold the book, how to turn pages, um, which way to turn pages, know to move eyes from left to right, at least in American culture. But that child cannot read, the, um, read independently for a long time. But this is the zone of proximal development. This right here, this young little baby and the parents, this is the zone of proximal development. Um, the advanced learner not only models reading, but how to stop and reflect on the story, think about the character, make predictions about the story, and make inferences about the plot or characters. All of this happens when the parents read to the child. The adult supports the learner who cannot do any of those things independently. The child can do it with the support from the adult. The supports, this, um, this supports previous research about wealthier, remember what I talked about, wealthier and educated parents helping kids learn more words and learn different ways of thinking, more so than less wealthy or less educated parents. So they're already in incorporating these parents who engage in reading at home are more likely to ask questions about the text, talk about things, make the student or make the child aware of the characters and what they're wearing and how it might play an important role in the, in the story. Um, educated parents place their children in the zone of proximal development where the child is exposed to those external social, cultural, and historical cues such as reading. These experiences support the learning for the learner. All right, here's a classroom example. Let's consider students who are in classroom where the teacher supports students thinking about mathematics. A learner is struggling to understand percentages. I know this is not exactly a picture of a child learning percentages, but play along with me. The advanced learner, the teacher, adds support by watching what the child can do independently and providing assistance when the child needs support. The learner is explaining and the teacher is providing guidance and support only when the child makes mistakes in much the same way that a parent supports a new child in riding a bike. This is ideally the zone of proximal development. Ideally, this is how it can work. So that's what we were trying to do in the classroom, to provide an opportunity for the, the, the teacher to support the learner by providing strategic assistance when necessary. Not all the time, but when necessary. The task isn't too hard, it's not too easy, but it's the task that the child needs assistance to help him learn what the, the skills he needs to learn. Okay? All right, so why does the zone of proximal development work? What is happening while in the zone of proximal development. How does it facilitate learning? That's what I want you to think about as you prepare to watch the next screencast. So I want you, I'm gonna end here 
And, um, and then you're going to think about these things for the next screencast. Or we're going to talk about it, but you can think about it before we get there. Try to put your um, understanding um, of the concepts to work. What is really essential? What is important there? Think about what we learned about last week. All right. Thanks. See you at the next screencast.